has been a tough couple of years for mining companies, but what about companies operating in Russia? We have the chairman of Petropavlovsk with us now, Peter Hambro. Thanks so much for being with us. Pleasure to be here. Thank so you very much. I'm excited to get uh, your, your sentiments on gold, but let's first talk mining. It's been a tough couple of years. Um, how do you see the landscape for mining set up right now? Well, for us in Russia, it's been relatively easier than most people because we've had a depreciating right. ruble and 75% of our costs are ruble denominated. But we've still had to make some major changes and we've had to cut costs wherever we can. And we've got them down now. We're forecasting $600,000, sorry, $600 an ounce uh, wow. the, for this year. So extremely low and compared to the rest of the industry. So is it mostly due to the, to the lower currency? Lower currencies helped a great deal, but we have managed to cut costs dramatically across the uh, uh, across the whole, the whole part of the thing. We we employed a, a firm of consultants to come in and help us, um, and that was also very successful. Now, Peter, you've gone on the record and said that if you have to be in the gold business, it must be physical. Why is that? Well, I believe that uh, the reason to be in gold is that it's nobody else's promise. If you have uh, gold in the bank or gold uh, on a futures exchange or something like that, you're just ex swapping one promise for another promise, whereas you have actually have the physical stuff, and I usually carry a bar around with me and I haven't got one today, but I have a big watch. Right, right. So what, what are your thoughts on the paper market? It, it looks very odd. It, it, it doesn't reflect, in my view, the demand that we're seeing for physical gold, particularly from India and from China. Uh, we've had a lot of people, even at the conference here today, saying, how could we get more of your gold into our country? Um, and that's not the w what is reflected in the futures market. The futures market is saying gold's overpriced. And I don't understand that. I think gold is very underpriced. Right. So on that note, what price do you feel gold should be at? What's the real value of gold? <laughs> well, I learned a long time ago that if I was any good at forecasting the price of gold, I should give up mining. Uh, and, and become a speculator. Uh, but I think it should be substantially higher than it is today. Any price range? <laughs> okay. um, what do you think will be the biggest threat to the gold price? I think the threat's on the upside. I think that uh, geopolitical instability uh, is the biggest risk. Uh, I think that there, we're seeing people wanting some sort of safe haven. And I think gold is still a very good one. Right. For which reasons? Well, because it's nobody else's promise. You don't, you don't have to worry that right. it's being stored by the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England or someone. Right. Peter, finally, you're a speaker here at the LBMA conference. What will be your, your message to attendees? Well, we're talking about hedging. Uh, we were one of the first companies to start hedging uh, when the gold price fell. Uh, and it's been very good to us. We've done, we've done well, and I think that there is a real role for hedging uh, for companies that are doing new, new projects, and I think we made a mistake uh, in not doing that uh, when we originally set out uh, on that road. I think the, the huge long-term financing of uh, projects with hedging, which got com companies into real trouble in the, uh, when the gold price went up, is a mistake, and I think one should avoid that. We have a, we have a policy of, of being a maximum of 50% of 18 months production hedged. Uh, doesn't say we will have that level of production, but we won't have any more than that. Interesting. What do you think is one thing that's really misunderstood about hedging? I think that the real problem was that when hedging became fashionable, and I used to sell hedging as a product when I was at Makata, um, the mining companies thought it was a magic bullet. And we heard the chairman of, uh, or no, the finance director of one mining company saying, my hedge book is now a profit center. And that hedge book turned out to be a real disaster for them because they thought they could handle it. Same problem with, with uh, Ashanti. That was a real disaster area, barracks. Um, and that level of, of, of wrong speculation was a, was a bad thing to do. Peter, thank you so much for stopping by and chatting with us. Pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. And thanks for watching our coverage here from the LBMA conference. We'll have more for you throughout the week, so be sure to stay tuned to Kitco.com. Thanks for watching.